Video 1, The Savoyard and the Student. In this video, we will follow Francis de Sales' early learning experiences in the areas of Annecy, Paris, and Padua. Chapter 1, I am in every way a Savoyard. Francis de Sales grew up amid the splendors of Savoy, its snow and sun high peaks and low valleys, forest and flowers. Certainly its beauty and its variety made an imprint on his life. On Thursday, August 21, 1567, in the master bedroom of the Chateau de Sales, Francis de Sales was born. He was the first child of Monsieur and Madame de Boisy. Why were the mother and father of Francis de Sales named de Boisy? Francis' mother had lived on the estate of Boisy in the village of Guazi, about 10 kilometers from the Chateau of Sales. The Chateau of Boisy and some of its grounds still exist. When she married Francis' father, his mother brought with her, as a dowry, the estate of Boisy, on condition that her husband take the name of Boisy. Most of their children, however, would be named the Sales. Today the chateau is owned by the government, but people still live there. The main entrance is beautiful and is often adorned with flowers. In fact, it is such a beautiful spot that wedding parties often come here to have their formal pictures taken. Just inside the door is a well-used stairway that Francis and his mother had walked. These details were given by a well-informed and a very personable neighbor. Francis was solemnly christened in his parish church Saint-Maurice, in the little town of Torrent, a short distance from Sales. His godfather was François de la Fléche. His godmother was his maternal grandmother, Damoiselle Bonaventure de chevron -Viette. Both gave their Christian names to their godchild. He was named François Bonaventure de Sales. In 1568, Francis' father purchased the Chateau of Braun, north of Sales, and the family spent time there in the summer months. Francis enjoyed its beauty, marred only by the ruins that remained after the alternate occupations of the troops of the Duke of Savoy, the Genevans, and the Bernese. Braun was in the Chablais, where battles between Protestants and Catholics had already been fought, and where one day he himself would take up the battle, but with the arms of persuasion, prayer, and his love of the people he had gotten to know at an early age. In October of 1573, at the age of six, after the great gathering vacation, Francis entered the celebrated Collège de la Roche, where young nobles and bourgeoisie were educated together. Francis was not alone, but was with his three cousins, Aimé, Louis, and Gaspard. They were accompanied by a tutor and lived in the home of Dumas, the schoolmaster. When Francis was nine, he and his cousins transferred to the Collège at Annecy, founded by Eustache Chapuis, the Collège Chapuisien, not far from the church of St. Dominic, where he would make his first communion and be confirmed. 
not far from Sales, Francis was tonsured in the village church near the Chateau de Clermont. The chateau is the only remaining trace of Renaissance architecture in the former duchy of Savoy. The church is at the extreme right of this picture. The ceremony took place here in 1578. Francis was not quite 12 years old. An altar commemorates the ceremony. A statue of St. Francis de Sales is found over the altar. A plaque marks the spot in memory of St. Francis de Sales who was given tonsure here. Chapter 2 The Humanistic and Mystical Student Probably in 1578, Francis and his cousins left for Paris where they would continue their education in one of the chief European universities. They would reside on the left bank of the Seine, that is, the area south of the river, since the river flows to the left or toward the Atlantic. On the left bank, the Rive Gauche, was the Latin Quarter, or the student's area. He and his cousins, with their tutor, Deage, took up residence at the Hotel of the White Rose, a building similar to these. Francis' father wanted him to attend his alma mater, the College of Navarre. The foundations of that building still remain. They can be seen at the bottom of the building. It is today part of the Polytechnical School. Here is the Pavilion Jaffre with its garden and pool. Francis had convinced his father to let him enroll in Clermont College, just a short distance away in the Rue Saint-Jacques. Clermont was run by the Jesuits and had a reputation for its stress on living an upright Christian life. It was known as a school rooted in loyalty and defense of the papacy. Francis preferred to study in such a setting. Today it is the prestigious Lycée Louis Le Grand. A stone remains in the courtyard of the present Lycée Louis Le Grand, which testifies to the site of the former Clermont College. This form, a blank form, for ordering salt for their reserves, was used by the Jesuit fathers at Clermont College. Its original is on parchment and is held in the National Archives in Paris. This provides us a link with the days of Francis. A detail from a map of the times gives us an idea of how Francis his companions, and the people looked. Paris, too, had been influenced by the Reformation. It strove to protect itself from the influence of Calvinism. One way was by setting up the League, a group dedicated to protecting the faith from the Reform. Its chief residence was in what is now known as the Soubise Mansion.